on the press. Yeah. Um, Ooh. Yeah, and Jerry, Jerry, Jerry Hart, Gary Hart. Yeah, you, you know, knew what and, I was and, thinking of. Investigate me if you think. Yeah. Yeah, so if you tell the press, I guess what happens? I have to. I mean, you know, it, understand too that if the working press does not like you and only the editors like you, don't piss off the working press. Yeah. That doesn't work. Uh, don't tell people that these people are not news agencies. Don't send your supporters out to condemn people, you know, uh, uh, you know that, that basically the people think are more fair than your people are. So, I oh, guess another one is, uh, don't tell the people that they're not intelligent enough to know right from wrong when it comes to voting. Ooh, ouch. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's so many things, okay, we're talking, the Republicans, this is for Republicans and Democrats too, because Republicans do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now, don't moralize in front, of the, in front of the people. People don't like to have people moralizing to them, even the people on the religious mm -hmm. right don't like to be moralized. So, yeah. I know, I'm sitting there thinking, it, it goes on and on and on. Oh, it just it doesn't because, stop. Whether it's broken campaign promises, not representing your district. Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. Not representing your district. Virtually, okay. You got to remember who you're elected to support. You're not, if you're elected as a representative from Los Angeles, you don't want to support the interests of Tucancari, New Mexico. No. You want to support Los Angeles. If you're a senator from Idaho, oh. you don't vote to support gay rights in in California. Um, similarly, if um, you represent a, a district, stick up for your district. Yeah. Uh -uh. Like some congressman who, let's just say, some high-ranking congressional people. Um, okay, shall we, shall we just say Vegas? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been chew chewed on, spit out, and um, come on, if you're not going to support your district, why do they want to reelect you? Yeah. And if you're elected on the cut government spending side, don't vote to increase spending every time a vote comes up because you're likely not to get the support from those people the next time, which is funny. You know, I, you know, you know I mean, a lot of these things sound like common sense. Uh, they're politicians. You know, when it comes, like Mark Twain, when it comes to a politician, you know, uh, sometimes I think chimpanzees are brighter. Well, you know, I think part of it is they're, they're kind of, their chains getting yanked by contrary interests. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, 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 Will Rogers used to, he'd chew on his little piece of straw and he'd say something intelligent like, you know, I went to the zoo yesterday, I thought I saw my representative, and then I discovered Noah's a monkey was too smart to be my representative. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but what's a politician to do? Oh, maybe vote, go with what the his district wants. That would be neat, wouldn't it? I mean, uh, stand up for your district. Yeah, and uh, don't don't do everything by polling because I hate to tell oh. the presidents and all the members of the House and Senate people lie. Oh, you mean people lie during polls? Yeah. Oh, and, and here's the other thing is when we say don't trust those poll results, um, you may also want to look at how the poll was taken. <laughs> Generally, if it's a poll that's supported with somebody, it was taken in a district or an, or an area where the support for the man exists. They don't take it in an area where there might be, uh, you know, where there's a chance that people might not like him. They don't go to that area. Yes, yeah, so you might be looking at who was polled, also who was the polling agency, and who paid for the poll. Yeah, that all depends yeah. on how the questions were asked. Because uh, if you, for instance, you don't like, uh, you don't like George Bush, you simply ask, uh, can you tell me how many children George Bush has ate lately? <laughs> or, uh, you know, how many, how many Latinos has George Bush personally saw executed in the last month? It basically, if you answer, you basically, if you answer none, you're still saying, well, he ate people or he executed people somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. You know, uh, how often do you think George Bush has beat his wife in the last year? Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then after you follow several questions, it's like, 
how likely are you to vote for George Bush? Yeah. Right? That's I mean, how come, it works. you know. Yeah. Because you've already primed the pump that the guy, he eats Latinos, he executes Latinos, and he beats his wife. And if you're thinking this sounds ridiculous, that's well, how the questions are done. I, I'll tell you, I mean, when I was in college, I took, uh, I took a course on polling and public relations, and basically, we were given a job. We had, uh, okay, we were doing agricultural television out here because that's Los Angeles no longer an agricultural area. But the people doing ag TV wanted to keep their jobs. So our class was given the, uh, given the assignment to go prove that the people out there wanted agricultural TV. So basically, we first asked people who watched that. We finally went to a book. You know, we, we, we basically call people up, do you watch agriculture TV? No. Do you watch agriculture TV? No. Do you watch? Yes. Then we put that name in a, in a fishbowl. And then after we basically found a whole, was it enough for a statistical thing, we, we drew out of the fishbowl, which was 100% people watched agricultural TV, and then went to the places and did surveys about, does agricultural TV help you in your profession? My God, this, uh, you know, the school said, we didn't realize that agricultural TV was such a popular thing. Uh, you know, because they didn't do uh, ratings on agricultural TV because it was a, we're talking, it's like public broadcasting, except when the colleges did it. And they kept it on the air. And it was a phony survey. They, they paid the, you know, they, the professor was paid to, in his communications class, to make certain that the, well, he was also, unfortunately, he was the producer and director of the agricultural TV show. Oh, and well. And it happened to be uh, one to keep that job also. Mm -hmm. But that's how it's done. You pay people to get the answers you want, and they'll twist the questions to get it. They'll go, anybody think that Bill Clinton was as popular as he was? No. He, they went to areas that supported Bill Clinton to get, and, and he still was only getting 60% in an area where people loved him. So Barack Obama, Obama, when Obama's writing high in the polls, is because they go to areas where the people, black Americans don't even like this guy anymore. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, he's the only person we have. No, they, 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 they basically, Hillary Clinton is back in the mix. Mm -hmm. So uh, another one, uh, and don't believe what the press tells you. Oh, that's that's like don't believe what the White House tells you either, yeah. or don't believe what X X X whoever tells you, yeah. right? Because it's not gospel. I know it's just sort of ridiculousness, isn't it? You'd think that grown people, men and women, would know better than to believe. I mean, like Mark Twain said, you only believe this, you only believe that, you only that. And so, uh, oh, here's part of it. Um, don't believe that commentary is the same as news. No, Bill O'Reilly is a commentator. Uh, Sean Hannity is a commentator. Uh, Bill, you know, uh, Oberman is a commentator. You know, um, there are those people. I mean, uh, the people, the people that are the news people, are the people doing the news shows, not the one-hour shows. The half-hour news show is a news show. And um, don't believe that news is unbiased. No. <laughs> yeah, I love that one. I don't believe that it is bias. Mm -hmm. Just because you don't like the people that are doing the news does not mean they're lying to you. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, well, you know, like, I mean, uh, for instance, um, was it Bill, uh, we got John Stewart thinks that everybody over on Fox lies. Everybody on Fox mm -hmm. lies. As, you know, even, you know, Chris, Chris Wallace lies because he doesn't, his political viewpoint is opposite of theirs. And, um, you know, Bill O'Reilly, for instance, and Sean Hattie thinks everybody on the left lies. Mm -hmm. That the New York Times lies. That the Washington Post lies. That, you know, then they got Rush Limbaugh lies. I mean, no, they, they it, the trick is, um, we're gonna tell you something very important. I love Mark Twain because Mark Twain basically is from, he was the original source for Monty Bubbles. Mark Twain said simply, the, the last thing that anyone will ever believe is the truth. If you tell somebody the truth, they will absolutely think you're lying. Mm -hmm. So that's what Wiener could have told everybody the truth and... and, and uh, he said, could have been off the hook. He could have got off the hook. So instead, he basically picked on people he knew that were supportive of him and would say that, Republicans are behind this and they're all lying. Yeah. 
Well, not everybody lies and not everybody tells the truth. It's not like um, uh, in my era, because I'm, I'm, I, went to, oh God, I went to college over 50 plus years ago. Um, I was taught that basically you reported no secondhand information. If you didn't get a backup, yeah. you didn't get somebody to back up that, it was not printed or put on the air. Mm -hmm. Today, you're convicting people of murder with nothing. I mean, we got hearsay information. Well, I heard somebody here, you know, heard that they had heard somebody say that these people buried the body in the desert. And you, you spend know, a life in a jail cell for that. I mean, those things actually shouldn't even be considered. It shouldn't be considered, but that is the way things are done today. News is no longer, uh, it's, it basically is a profession, it is, um, um, like I said, did, the Michael Jackson death was the day news is listed as dying. Cause we actually went to a thing at Cinnamon Verde, which I was at that time. They said the, uh, the thing on the family loud, basically they blamed for destroying broadcast television mm. because it showed people had a, a love for the destruction of people. So uh, the uh, Michael Jackson thing, they crossed the line, the news people crossed the line of which they can never come back mm -hmm. from over to entertainment. But um, it's just, they've been doing it for years. Sports division has been head of news divisions for years because they would use sports reporters and news reporters to cover major sporting events like the Olympic Games and things like that because a reporter is a reporter. He's supposed to do both. But what happened was that the entertainment divisions got hold of the news divisions. Mm -hmm. And that's when you had a problem. But we're going to, I think over the span of the next, oh God, the next year, you're going to hear a lot of things about politics, folks. Oh, yeah. Many, many things. But until that time, next time, this is OCAM. And this is not a spring chicken. We're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow. For more information, you yeah. can always go to www.montybubbles.net on the net. And wherever you're watching us, subscribe to us, follow our daily newscast in 3D. And thank you once again for over 40 minutes. <laughs>